Good morning, Wonderland. It is a foggy, chilly morning. <laughs> I've got a reasonably bright and early start this morning. And I've come to Pocahontas State Park, which I want to say is one of the largest, if not the largest, state park in Virginia. And it's not far from home. Um, and I don't come here enough. <laughs> there's a, it's mostly forest, but there's a few lakes. And one of them in particular is supposed to be a nice birding hotspot, especially as we're approaching spring. So um, yeah, I wanted to work on my birding today. That's what we're doing. <laughs> come along. So for gear today, I'm sticking with the R5, even though of course the R7 has more reach. Uh, with the crop factor, I think I want to try the R5 and crop down if I need to, because uh, kind of realizing 45 megapixels for most things is a lot. <laughs> so I've definitely got leeway to crop. So I've got the R5, I've got my, of course, 100 to 500 millimeter. I've got the 1.4 teleconverter if I need it. Um, for Scenics and whatnot, I've got the 24 to 105 F4L. And I've got the 100 millimeter macro in case I see some good uh, flowers and stuff popping up. And I've brought my new tripod and gimbal. Oh, did I mention my new tripod? I don't think I did. So yeah, um, I've had for years an old Manfrotto, 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 whatever, um, an aluminum tripod, which is, is good, um, but heavy. So I wanted to move on, move up to carbon fiber. Um, for a long time, I've wanted to do that, even though I don't use a tripod all that much. Um, but I wanted to remedy that, right? And I figured if I had a lighter tripod, maybe I'd haul it around more often. So just kind of as a matter of timing, um, Mark Denny, one of the other YouTube photographers I follow, uh, he did a post or video on tripods. And then photo tripper Gavin Hardcastle, he did one too. And I took that all as a sign <laughs> that I should go ahead and invest. So um, Gavin's was actually, uh, I don't want to say shilling, but he was talking about his FLM tripods, which is what I ended up getting because um, they seem to be good quality, but mid-range price-wise. This one was, I want to say, four to $500. Um, the model is CP30-L4 number two. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it goes pretty tall. It's like 68 inches, I think, which is about eye level for me, especially with the gimbal on top. Um, easy to extend. Maybe I'll do a, a more proper review on it sometime, but this is really my first time taking it out in the field. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm hoping it'll help. Obviously, um, if I find a good hotspot with lots of birds, I can set up and just shoot with the gimbal. That's the idea. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. Maybe shoot a little a few scenics on the way towards the lake, and then once I get to the lake, we'll set up and do some proper birding. Yeah, okay. This is definitely a trail at this park that I've never been on. I've been here a number of times since it's our closest state park, but usually we do the same trail and it's not this one. This is the Beaver Lake Trail. And the area I'm in now is, let me flip around, it's kind of swampy, really. Um, I'm hearing lots of birds. I've seen a few. So far, they're not coming very close. <laughs> which, you know, I should expect that. They don't come very close, but hoping to find a real hot spot uh, by the water. I think once I get to the, the lake proper, I'll find some more, but it's a nice morning for a walk at least.
Well, I gotta say, the birding here has kind of been a bust on this visit. I'm, I'm hearing lots, but they're definitely keeping their distance and those tricks <laughs> to creep up on them or uh, get them to come closer to me are what I need to learn. So I think my conclusion is this is now officially a tripod review video. <laughs> so let me flip around and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so there she is. That's, uh, like I said, it's the FLM CP30-L4 Mark II. Um, yeah, carbon fiber. I'm liking it. It's been a lot lighter to haul around, which is good. So um, let me kind of give you the quick tour. So my Manfrotto, Manfrotto, I never know how to pronounce that. Anyway, um, it was aluminum and it was center column type. So it had the center column that you could raise and lower. Um, which was okay, but that really limits it from being able to spread too low. It did, the column would come up and flip to the side, um, so you could get low, but then that was, never found that to be very stable or convenient. So this is nice on the legs on this one. Um, the default position stops here, but then you can pop this up and pull it out to uh, either here or, or flat, basically. So it's got a three level adjustment and it really these are firm enough um, the joints that I think you could set it to a middle range position and it'd still be fairly stable but it has three hard stops plus it can fold of course inward um, let's see the cams on the legs the locks are twisty type which I don't usually like but these are nice because you only have to twist them a little bit before they loosen up and then sorry about the angles here um, once you re-tighten it it grips pretty quickly and it holds firm. My Manfrotto had the clippy, the levers, and uh, those are always just a little harder to do. So yeah, I'm liking this so far. Uh, you got a ball level, bubble level here, of course. Um, this is my gimbal on top, so ignore that. Each leg has a quarter 20 hole, uh, which is nice for mounting things to it, I think. And it's got a hook underneath, if you can see that there. Um, for holding a sandbag, camera bag, add weight, whatever. So yeah, I'm liking it. But let me show you the one thing that I haven't been enjoying about my setup today. The ball head that I'm using, and it's not the ball head's fault, but it came with this Arca Swiss plate. And hopefully I can do this one-handed. Loosen that up. So I've been having trouble <clears throat> with this coming loose and swiveling, um, which makes it difficult when I'm trying to hold it on my shoulder. Um, so yeah, this, I could, didn't bring a straight slot screwdriver to tighten this up real well, but what I really need, you can see it's got these extra holes and it can line up with that hole in the tripod collar on this lens, but I don't know what I need to go in there to do that. That's what I need to figure out, because otherwise I have to keep taking this off and tightening this up or it starts to get wiggly. And I really don't want the lens and camera to fall off the tripod, of course, when I'm carrying it on my shoulder. That'd be bad. <laughs> so yeah, if you know what I need to go in there, let me know. <laughs> otherwise I'll try to rig something, I'm sure. But yeah, that's the one thing that's been a headache today so far. But otherwise, not bad. Okay. So I'm at this little observation point. I'll see if I can find anything else to shoot around here. I've mostly been doing scenics. Um, resorted to shooting some geese and sparrows, just little common birds flitting around. So nothing real interesting. I've seen some good stuff. Saw a white squirrel earlier, but of course that scampered off before I could get set up to shoot it. So maybe I'll see it again on the way out. That would be cool. And on that note, I'm getting hungry. So I'm gonna keep moving. See what I can find to shoot, if anything, and then go get lunch. Yeah, okay. Okay, a little bit of walking and talking while I'm heading back to the car. So, in terms of my tripod buying decision, uh, of course I'd been looking at the Peak Design tripods, which I'm sure are very nice, but uh, also way pricey. really didn't want to spend that much on a tripod. Um, which I haven't traditionally used all that much, which again, I'm trying to fix this here, obviously. 
Um, but on the lower end, there's like, you know, the Amazon Chinese folks, Yulanzi and all those. And I'm sure they're fine too, especially if you don't use it all that much, <laughs> which I was that guy for a long time. Um, but I wanted to invest a little more than that in something that would hopefully last longer, be higher quality in general, a little more comfort features. So then when I saw Gavin's video on Photo Tripper, I was like, that seems like a pretty good compromise between uh, price and quality. Of course, he didn't pay for his. One of the benefits of having many thousands of followers, which could be me someday. Like and subscribe. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I saw that video, I was like, I can do that. 400 bucks, I think it was. That's reasonable, I think, for a quality carbon fiber tripod. Now they do sell a more travel oriented one. This one has four leg sections. Uh, the travel one has five, so it folds up or compacts down a little more. And I will say, so far I haven't found a good way to carry this one in my bag or on my backpack. I need to play with that a little more. So the travel one might have been a little better from that perspective, but more joints mean more failure points. And I uh, thought I'd go with this middle range one. And so far the height has been fine. If I extend all the legs, the camera's actually over my head with the gimbal. So that's nice. <laughs> Um, you want a little extra so that if you're on an uneven slope, you can extend one leg further to keep things level. So, yeah. Good job, FLM. If you want to send me anything else to look at, not that this was free, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm going to see anything else on the way out, so I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Whew, getting out of breath. That was a little bit of an uphill. Um, yeah, it's been a good morning. Good walk. I'm starving though, so really looking forward to lunch at this point. But I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Any questions, drop me a comment. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Don't forget to be awesome. Get out and wander. <laughs> Till next time.